6.15, here we are on August 8th. And, recording um, in progress. Recording is in process. And we've um, advertised this meeting publicly and on the website and emailed interested parties. So we can move ahead with the legal warn meeting. Um, we've got um, some minutes from the um, July 13 special select board meeting, which was a presentation on the um, the school project, and um, I would move to approve those minutes. They look like they captured the essence of what we were talking about there. I second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Okay. And then there are the minutes for the July 25th select board meeting, which I was not there, so I'll leave that to you guys to to move to approve or not. And I have read the minutes. I find them to be accurate. So I move that we accept the minutes from July 25th select board meeting. I second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. I that. And we've got um, a collection of guests, and I think the first um, person listed there is Norm, and that goes right along with the first item under new business, which is Scape Space Fundraising. Am I a, a correct? That's correct. Um, we're beginning the drive. Um, we're going to do a mailing to all the residents of Rochester, um, a three-fold brochure, both sides, and um, where we're basically asking for funds and various amounts. Um, one thing we wanted to request is um, we're thinking of putting together a GoFundMe page. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how successful it's going to be, but we wouldn't be ones to deny any donations if they want to donate in a particular way. Um, so I'm thinking it's uh, worth a try. Um, you know, it seems like other organizations have had a lot of success with it. Um, so what I'd like to request is to uh, start one and um, actually, I, I sort of began a page and looked into the all the innards of GoFundMe, and uh, they say um, it, it's a subsidiary of PayPal, or they work together. So it's basically PayPal rates that they take <clears throat> as uh, you know uh, their profit uh, for a GoFundMe donation. So it would be 2.9 percent plus 30 cents per transaction. So if we were, uh, if someone was to donate $100, we would get essentially $97, and GoFundMe or PayPal would get three. Um, so what, what we'd like to do is, is, is hook up the um, Rochester Recreation account, like a bank number, you assign a bank number into the GoFundMe back end. So the money goes straight into the, no money goes the other way, it goes straight into the fund, so it only grows. Um, so we'd like to make uh, that request from the select board to the select board. Do we have a separate account specific for the um, rec committee? Yeah, there's, the one at the credit union, right? A reserve account. That's a the reserve. reserve account is in Mascoma. Are you looking for Wait. the money to go into the reserve account? That would be ideal. Um, it, it, if, if it's easier to do like the general Rochester account at large, that would be no. Mm -hmm. No, it would make yeah. more sense to go into the reserve account okay. to, if, if that's allowable through the bank. I don't know if there's restrictions placed on that type of account or not. I've and the me. auditors. Yeah. I would like to talk to Nathan about it first. Yeah, I think you'd want to. Yeah. And I don't know if there's any <clears throat> leverage with PayPal to get a, a discounted rate if it's a municipal application or not, but that's worth asking. Mm. To mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I don't um, see any reason, Nancy. I have another comment. Yep. Norm, mm -hmm. would you consider sending this to? Um, Valley residents, so that you get Hancock and Granville um, and Stockbridge, um, um, who also use all of the facility. Uh, right now, we have just uh, Stock, just Rochester on our um, radar. I mean, I can be 
we can be convinced to expand it a little farther. Um, they use it. I have the counts yeah. too for those towns if you need it. Um, the GoFundMe page would reach out to um, um, to, to everybody, basically. Right. So you you would be overreaching into the other towns. In that way. But we could, a it, it's a matter of numbers. Um, I was talking with Jobin at the postal service, and um, he was talking about what is it, 700 uh, mailboxes here that would be filled, um, you know, for a certain price. I think mean, it's like 150 bucks. Really, it's a pretty good deal. Um, we could expand the handcuffs, perhaps. You know, it's, if if we want, I don't know how many mailboxes there are and. Not as that many as Rochester, I don't think. Yeah, I, mean, so I think between three hundred. I have the numbers. Maybe another seventy-five or yeah. hundred bucks to go to Hancock. Is it, is it worth? Is it worth it? I I think so it probably is. Even if just to get the awareness of the GoFundMe the page so? out there too. You never know. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. But Nancy's right. It's we're not. It's not just limited to Rochester residents to use it. We can, it's right. open to the public. We definitely um, send it to Stockbridge. They love contributing to Rochester. So I have another question on GoFundMe. Can municipalities participate in GoFundMe? I think that's yeah, what, so we have to look into. Yeah, that's what we want. I think that anybody can participate. That's anybody a question can for give money to anybody, anybody, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just a matter of... But can they accept it? I, I, I recall doing like a PayPal donation button once and um, I think like for certain charities you might get a break. I don't know if a municipality would count as a charity, but I can find that out. I think we really have to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. To see sure. what, what their take is on all that. Yeah. I think your accountant will answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> And the, um, Even if they opened a, a a little account at the credit union to funnel the money that way and have it separate, and then you can decide where it needs to go from there. Yeah. Yeah. It takes one visit to the credit union yeah. to open an account. So mm. um, I was thinking about printing these. Well, at least getting these to the printer to look at by tomorrow. Would we be able to? Would do you mind um, sending me an email with like what you're looking to do, what you're thinking about doing, and with regards to the GoFundMe, perhaps having the money going into the reserve? Could you just send me something like that, um, so then I can pass that along and I'll get on it. I don't know, yeah. you know, yeah. when he can, when he'll answer, and also tomorrow's elections too, so oh, it's kind of a busy good. day. Um, but yeah, if you can get me that, I'll get it to him as soon as I get it and see what he says. Okay, this is who? The um, Nate, his name's Nathan. He's the, our auditor. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we ask him lots of good questions like this just to keep us safe all the time. Yeah. So I would much rather run it by him. Yeah. He's our go to for funding. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then the second part of uh, my question is, um, is about the other go to for funding. Um, we're up against um, uh, that there's. Uh, um, but the state recreational uh, facilities grant that's going to be uh, next, it's going to be due September 10th. And um, Dean and I are kind of rallying, um, getting our things together for that, which includes getting some of these funds going. Um, and we have a whole checklist that we're going through. Um, it would be very helpful to uh, seek some help from uh, Joan Allen, the uh, town grant writer, um, if, if anything, just for a, a little consultation to see if we're doing things correctly or if she could help us in certain areas, because we're kind of up against uh, up, up against the gun here. Uh, we have about one month to get. Uh, this thing up. I, I don't think uh, Joe's last day is like the 26th or 7th. Last Friday in August, whatever, whatever day that is. I, I don't think she's going to want to deal with that. I think the best thing to do, uh, we do have a meeting set up with Joan and, and the uh, Two Rivers on this Friday. At what time is that? Friday? One, One o'clock. So uh, we're going to meet with them. I'll run it by Rita at 
that two rivers and maybe she can help us with that. Okay. And, yeah, and get us pointed in that direction anyway. Much over time, yeah. Just uh, if you could see our, you know, the checklist and <coughs> give us a quick rundown on how to hand out certain things. Um, she doesn't really have to do any of the labels. Right. Um, just to actually see what we're doing, <coughs> see if it's right. Um, things like that, which shouldn't theoretically take you know, maybe half an hour, an hour. I also have, uh, did you guys have copies of our mailer? You, want to, you got it? Okay, yeah. good. Um, all right, so that, that was the two. Uh, when, when are you meeting with uh, two Friday. Friday. On Friday. On fr Friday, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd be great to, uh, you know, give her Is some of our September 10th that the uh, grant is due? September 10th, yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's a long list of stuff, and I don't I have no idea if we're, if we're gonna hold a qualifier, but uh, at least we can just uh, get them on our radar. So, all right. Well, all right. thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for pushing that forward. <clears throat> all right. So we've got um, Sue Malton, you here um, for a speed report. Wondering what the possibility of changing the speed limits. I know this has come up before mm -hmm. on the back roads. Um, you know, with the amount of traffic we have now, with all the new people moving in, or people just up vacationing, or what it is, there's so much more traffic, bicyclers, pedestrians, everything, and 35 miles an hour. And some of those roads might not seem much, but it's pretty fast um, on some corners. And right. and when you're when there's a truck going 35 on a corner in the middle of the road, they can't. I mean, it's, it's kind of treacherous. It, it yeah. makes you not want to walk up there anymore. And I I know even coming down Bethel Mountain Road on the pavement, it's 30. Um, and it seems like some of our roads are a little more, need some a little more caution, but, um, and since they've widened the roads so much more, people I think feel they can go faster. And if it's posted 35, 45 would be the speed limit that they feel a lot of them. And people that aren't even from up here don't seem to, concerned about until they end up in the ditch yeah yeah, yeah. Then they get and then yeah. with the amount of people just walking and dogs and little kids and it just it doesn't feel safe it, it's, it's really and, and with all the stones being thrown when they drive right. past right. And, um, and because I don't know when they put the speed limit but there weren't as many cars it, it just the traffic wasn't not as many people but uh -oh. Steve, this is the people, the person, people who bought our house. Right. Um, today on a quiet day, he was just like keeping track of how many cars go by on our little road that there didn't used to be any. What did you get? Between 8.30 and 4 o'clock, and at, to Sue's point, today was kind of a slow day, a quiet day mm -hmm. up there. There were 55 vehicles going past our houses. Mm -hmm. Just our little road that uh, they didn't, you know, I mean, where did they, we don't even I mean, it's, <laughs> Yeah. So, on a, uh, and that's a slow day, 8.30 to a.m. to 4 p.m. I wouldn't be surprised if you were approaching 100 cars a day at least um, on a normal day. Uh, and I, you know, is that as much as Route 100? I, I don't know. All I know is it, it's a lot of cars. Um, Going dust fast. is an issue. Yeah. You know, um, so what, well, what kind of a speed limit are you thinking? 25? I know I was talking to someone who lives in Granville on the mm -hmm. back roads, and they've always had 25 miles an hour on their back roads. Mm -hmm. She said it's always been that way. Um, 25 seems, because if you have 25, they're going to go 35. Right, that's how I was going to say. And then right. we've also Change noticed, all you want and it's, yeah. we noticed that where they're, like, Marshbrook Road, don't feel, where that road's not wide, there's no speed limit sign here. You don't drive, 
There's no sign that tells you you need to go 35 miles an hour faster. So they go slow on that road because it's treacherous road. Yeah. There's a 35 mile an hour sign right in front of David Sprague's house where the pavement and the dirt meet. So when they're coming on the pavement, they see that they're already going 45. They don't need to slow down. That's really fast by someone's house. That's they've widened the road so much that you're they've encroached in their driveway on their yard. So and and if any one of you will challenge you to go up for a ride and drive 35 miles an hour without slowing down on any of those roads. And it's not safe. With the stone that's on there now, there are corners that yeah, you have to slow You down. skid. You skid yeah. because they lose stone. Yeah. So. The speed limit doesn't mean you have to go that fast. No, but I think yeah. a lot of people who are coming up <laughs> who don't appreciate Vermont Never. values think yeah, that if right. it says 35, they have to go right. that fast. Um, so <laughs> anyway, um, and if I, I think there is a, is there a, you have to do a survey or you have yeah, to do, you have to do a whole I, I think I ordinance. think so I'll talk that over with Rita she's going to be here on Friday and we can decide I did a study on the Bethel Mountain Road this spring we they did one for us and I haven't had time to go through the results with her and sit down she's been really busy she was away on vacation for a couple of weeks and then we've been tied up with so many other things too but I have talked about lowering the Bethel Mountain Road to 40. Up on the top where it says 50? Yeah. Yeah. To just coincide with Bethel yeah. because yeah. theirs is 40 miles. Right. Right. The only thing that you get with a lot of these things is um, enforcement. The only way you can really deal with it is enforcement, and we don't have the tools to do that. And uh, I've talked with Bethel about it some. Um, they're in a constable situation where they have a constable for 20 hours a week, but it's, it doesn't work for them either. So they're at a quandary on what to do because it's cost so damn much to have them there for 20 hours a week that they're looking at what can they do other than that. So we're, we're all in the same boat. They, there's not enough law enforcement and the state can't handle it because they, they're shorthanded and the sheriffs are shorthanded too and they're expensive um, so and I talked to Mike the sheriff out here last week and uh, he was saying that I've been up on the roads and dirt roads and stuff but it's hit or miss know. you know it's, yeah. it's like he can't you know we only have him for like what eight hours a week i think so he, and he comes over four hours he'll sit in the village or whatever and try to get some cars but it's in the town plan to try to get the village lord to 25 and we'll i'll talk with her about what we should do up there if we can even remotely lower that speed because it's right. not I, I guarantee if I, I had a petition there would be everyone in the hall is right. that one. so now, as a suggestion you wouldn't cost much money how about some speed bumps in various areas? we could just stop grading the road <laughs> that would be great <laughs> i would love that save money we there all too. Would love that yeah there. <laughs> until you have to start yeah, yeah. fixing your car yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the best thing because yeah. you know they didn't use to we, when there were potholes and bumps people had to go slow oh yeah, yeah. that's yeah. fine by the people who live out there <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the phone rings the other way too. A lot of yeah, people don't they, like it either. So they're just driving through. <laughs> so you can, we get it from both sides. Uh, but what what about a speed bump? What about speed bumps? Uh, oh, I, we could work with a snowplow. No, no, they'd have to come out. I, yeah. I don't think. Well, in the be winter good. they better slow down. It's icy in there, but it, like in the summer they don't seem to care about it. <laughs> anyway. We did have the temporary speed bumps we put in on Brook, right, Street on Brook Street when we had to divert right. the traffic because yeah. of the construction because they on Bethlehem Road. They were down. picked up by winter. They were picked up by winter. Oh, yeah, they weren't yeah. there. Yeah, you're right. So, and we put, you know, Joyce people have slow down signs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they don't have to be slow down. 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 You know, there, there is a... Uh, well, I think, I think if you post, if the road's posted for 35, which all the dirt roads, that's what they are posted yeah, in town. Yeah, that's the town. That's so right. And if anybody puts up a sign, unofficial, 
that says 25 mi miles an hour. It nullifies the 35 so they can drive 50 if they want to. No, I don't mean a sign there. I just <laughs> no, but that's, I'm just saying that that's what the rules are. So Yeah, you can't just start putting up. Yeah, your post with your own signs up yeah. there. So we'll, we'll just talk with Rita, see what she says, and, and work to do that. I mean, I don't have a problem lowering the speed limits on those roads. I really okay. don't. Not have to continue to widen them so that they feel they can fill them. Well, that's a different issue. That's kind of mandated to, mm -hmm. in terms of controlling water and the ditching, and you know, really? yeah, is yeah. Everyone, because we drive around other back roads in Vermont, and they're not and they're, as wide as ours. Mm, on the bright really. side, it sounds like our town is growing. <laughs> yes, yeah, it feels like it up there. So, yeah. I think vibrant is a good word to use for that. It's like it's vib vibrant. vibrant traffic. Is there a mandate of width to the roads? Uh, I don't think there's a mandate. A mandate. Yeah, not, that I, not that I'm aware of. Just, but there's a right of way for the roads. And it's what is that right away? 50 feet. From the center. 20, 25 from the center. Yeah. yeah. That's if you're. What does that mean that you own, down owns? Down no, it has right away, right from away. The right away for dealing with mowing and ditching and, and, and work tree removal or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it doesn't mean we need to make the road 50, 50 feet, feet wide. wide. No. So there's no. nothing that says how wide that the road has to be? Well, that it designates the class of the road, sure. whether right. it's a class three or class yeah. four, right. that's part of the parameters of how they're designated. Because you'll see, I think you'll notice some of the dirt road parts are wider than the paved roads up there, where they grade them back. Yeah. yeah, it's part of the process of grading, too. Mm. You know, I mean, on pavement, there's a pretty obvious edge. Yeah, you could save, you that could save some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know that Hancock's, the width of the roads are a lot smaller. Um, and Randall um, also. I went up Champagne Road and Hancock. Tiny little road. You do have to be careful when you drive up there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's yeah. less wide and no gravel. It's crowned. Uh, it's just tight and narrow. Yeah. Gravel. And wide. And yep. you get the yeah, fly so we keep working to try and make the roads passable and safe. You know, it's um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. in a way having a, a, a less wide road. That sort of demands that cars so, that they naturally slow down. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, the well, there's the no faster. going back, I don't think, to making them narrower yeah. than they are now. Because then they're going to slide into one the other. Unless they have a flood, <laughs> then the flood might make the road narrower. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like floods, you know, yeah. the road yeah. kind of goes down, all the gravel from the road ends up in everybody's backyard. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's. So at some point, there could be, we could look into a different recipe for hovercrafts and get rid of all the roads and just right. flip to uh, no, yeah. um, Other towns are doing yeah. that, they have different recipes on their roads. Yeah, there's a lot of standards that have been right. mandated. Right, the state is requiring yeah. that the ditching on each side of the road or the, the water True. runoff ditches have to be huge. You take yeah. a Volkswagen bug, flip it upside right. down, that's the size of the ditch. Um, so it does give the appearance of a is much there, wider road. Is, so is when there, they when the ditches, oh, yeah, so is. if the ditches have to be, then when they get filled up to stuff in the culverts and the gravel, aren't they supposed to maintain the culverts that are they bringing they, more dirt to raise the road? Well, they'll re-ditch them. They'll clean out the yeah. ditches. They'll often dig design. them back out again. Well, there are a lot of ditches. Yeah. 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 They, they, they do so much stuff. every year. Yes. He, he tends to do the worst so, places so like that he gets. Like eight, eight, eight feet wide? Yeah, feet the right. specs are like so, that. So you're saying so no the ditches have to be eight feet on each side. And they have to be U-shaped. They can't, they can't, can't be V-shaped or anything. They, the water has to flow not yeah, nice. long for the Clean Water Act. Yeah. Does that depend on the pitch of the road? Um, a lot of it does in certain pitches, and then also it depends on the um, proximity to waterways. Right. They call it yeah. hydrologically, hydrologically connected. connected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about using some of the uh, packable sand instead of just 
raking up the gravel all the time. If anybody's been over the Lincoln Pass sand. lately, <clears throat> the top third is paved. Mm -hmm. The bottoms are paved, but in between it's right. it's gravel, but it's not gravel. They put down a uh, packable sand and people are doing 45 miles an hour on that road, either side of the pass, and there's almost no potholes. It's hard, it's smooth, and it doesn't seem to wash out every time it rains. I mean, In the summer. maybe we should look into some of that. It's cold in the winter. They use, is yeah. that what they put on, on Marshbrook Road? From when you first turn on to Marshbrook Road? From no, that out? was... Um, that's hard. Pack. That's wrapped. That was reclaimed asphalt. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. <laughs> yes and no. And yes and no. Yeah, Trying to grade it. Yeah. So you yeah. get some yeah. uh, And then you can't grade no, it. No, no. You can't smooth it. Right. I mean, does anybody want to address that sand issue? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, I, I can put talk some of that down on uh, yeah, that's, that's Maple a state Hill. Road. Yeah. We're talking town roads versus state roads. Right. So it's trouble getting it. Yeah. yeah. It'd be expensive. That's stuff he's it. talking about they get is that's up in Barry. You might yeah. want to cost truck it down there. So yeah. what is that stuff they put on now? That white powdery rock? Oh, it's from Florence crushed down. That makes it's dust that. all year long. It's, it's crushed it's, marble. And it's, loose it's, stones. It's, no, it's limestone. Yeah. It's limestone yeah. from yeah. Yeah. It's not Addison limestone. County. Well, you know, and I'm not talking about doing all the 51 miles of roads in Rochester with that sand, but for example, on West Hill, the approach going up the hill past Welch's property is extremely steep, and a road department comes and grades it occasionally, and it lasts about a week, and then like. We had that one last rainstorm. We have big ditches right down the middle of the, you know, on the, both edges of the road right now. It's totally washed out. It's washed out on other steep sections. I mean, I'm not, I don't think we're talking a whole lot of money to, you know, what's costs more? The road department coming every few, every month or so regrading or dumping a couple truckloads of sand and packing it down. I doubt that just tamping sand is going to not require grading or maintenance. I don't, I haven't, I haven't, I've driven on the road you're talking about and I'm not sure, I've not noticed that it was sand versus gravel. I know gravel, when it gets driven on a lot and it can, you know, a freshly, a freshly graded road is obviously chunky and rocky and after it's been driven down a while it can get pretty, pretty darn smooth and then things change but, um, but yeah I've um, I haven't heard of the packable sand for a I, know, I know what he did on Austin Hill up there um, this spring he tried they closed the road off and they they chlorided and they put a mix on it of different materials mm -hmm. and rolled it Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly how long it lasted, but the trouble is with a lot of these roads and steep parts of the hill, people drive in their all-wheel drive cars or their four-wheel drive trucks, and they just use two-wheel drive. So when you go up a hill with a four-wheel drive truck, you're spinning because you're light in the rear, mm -hmm. and it causes yeah. you know problems yeah, like that. A lot of people do that. I mean, if it's just nature, just the way that people do things. So I don't know. I know Austin Hill doesn't last all that long because of that. So we we also have a problem on West Hill where you guys put up a sign, use your four by four. Yeah. Unfortunately, you've now prevented any UPS or uh, FedEx. FedEx deliveries on our road. I don't so think they it says four to drive by four there. required. It just says use it if you have it. I don't think well, I, if they're well, using freshly that. Freshly graded, I think it says, right? Freshly graded? I mean, yeah. if that's a. Uh, I'll have to look into if that. If they're using that as an excuse not to drive up that road, I think they're just taking advantage of. Uh, well, the signs they have one on Brook Street, too. Right. right. If, if you have it, you have it. If you don't, well, you don't. Well, the delivery trucks will come up. Yeah, there's one on Brook Street. UPS and FedEx. Hmm. Right, but it was there for a few weeks. Yes, it said like loose gravel. Yeah, because um, they had graded the roads. Yeah. Yeah. So 
This might just be a matter of that sign will be coming down after they do the grading. Yeah, yeah they, they have to grade it again. Mm -hmm. They graded it about a month ago and now it needs it again. Mm -hmm. Good, so it's got roots in it and, and rivulets and, and that's good. That'll slow down the traffic, right? <laughs> Try getting somebody up here that has medical conditions. Yes, and, and, and the, in the back, question. Is Florence the closest and cheapest material for the road? It, it has been time. right now. Yeah, yeah. I is. mean, the Granville Bull Mill's out of business at the moment for the summer. Um, and uh, Mike has done some, some grinding there, but uh, they have the best material. It also doesn't create a lot of mud in the spring so well i agree with that i think it's yeah. pretty solid stuff besides it. yeah unfortunately it's white it, it, well it rumbles it's off too it, it gets your car mess it yeah. 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 seemed like a long way to go for material but i wasn't i didn't realize that there's mm, not know. around here <laughs> you can go further <laughs> no uh, i know john's done a price analysis on yeah, that their prices he, are cheapest he, and he's hasn't hauled a lot this summer, but he has hauled some just because of the fuel cost. So I know he's he's being careful that way. So, so do they have to put so much on? Like there's a few places where the road is raised. <laughs> we've been working <laughs> we've been working for the last several years to try and increase how much we're putting on because you're starting to get bedrock and the, the bones of the original road showing through from the gravel being dispersed from driving, from grading, and, and for years, every time that we needed to balance the budget, we would cut the gravel. And we we're like really unmaintaining the roads to um, a pretty drastic level. So in the past five, six years, we've been intentionally building up that budget and trying to, to build it up more. Yeah. Building up the yeah. Road. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you forgotten about West, West Hill? No. <laughs> no. You sure? <laughs> yeah. Between no. the bridge and the road. Yeah. You know, we pay taxes. Yeah. Maybe we should have a tax reduction. You already did that once when you got your house uh, renovated and you didn't want to pay the uh, increase in taxes on that. Did, um, no, we felt we were yeah. unfairly charged compared yeah. to our... Yeah. Uh, basic checking other people in the area with comparables. Yeah. Well, that's then Lister's job. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, there we know we haven't forgot about West Hill Road and, and that bridge is, I mean, that's under the, um, we're still waiting on the, the forest National Forest Service. Cough up the bridge, cough up the bridge. Uh, cough up the bridge. bridge. Yeah. But they have not backed out of that. No, they, they no, no. Speak. They have That's not backed still out. Yeah, just it's still on. Still on. They still pushed on. it down a year. Yep. That's what they so did. So is there is, is the town going to have enough funding? Has it been set aside for the town share as well as the uh, forest service? It will be. It will be. There yeah. isn't. There isn't a whole lot there that we have to fund. Yeah. The only part I think that we have to fund is just the it's entrance. The road. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to tar yeah. that when we get around because it's too short to grade it. You know, you can't, yeah. it's just a little ways to the bridge there. So. I mean, it's been a real imposition for other people. Uh, you know, years ago, we didn't realize what the capabilities of the bridge was. So I'll be the first to honestly say we ran seven yard, you know, cement trucks up over that bridge. Right. It's been logging going on and other yeah. people have yeah. drilled wells. Now everybody's really restricted and crossing that bridge. It's pretty much known that you can't get yeah. up there with anything heavy. Um, for example, uh, Mr. Smith, who has a camp across the road from us, wanted to, you know, had paid for all his spruce trees to be removed lumbered out and the price last year when he was going to do it was you know twelve hundred and ninety five dollars per thousand feet that's not saying what spruce would have been and now it's 500 so he's lost more than half his valuation in his in his trees um he's been you know he's not real happy he won't come to the meeting <laughs> but if he came he would voice his his disdain over this. 
Um, we have new neighbors who are um, bought the property next to us for a very large sum. And they're coming from Ohio with a large moving van. They can't get the moving van across the bridge. So not only are they paying their mover, which all of us would do if we were coming to a certain place, but they have to hire another vendor with a small truck to unload that moving van bit by bit and drive it up the road. And I mean, it's just, I don't know if I should just go down and yell at the Forest Service or what, but it's I just like, help. I can't believe the United States Forest Service can't find a bridge in, in this day and age. It's just like, obviously they got better things to do, but than our, than to fix our bridge. I realize it's been coming since 2009, because it's a lot of people out there. But it is frustrating, because I would like to do some capital improvements on my property, and if I break the bridge, then everybody's gonna be going, you fix it, you fix it, you did it. And you know, how long do I continue to live there and be restricted? I mean, I don't think anybody really realized when they moved there or has been there for a long time that that is a really restricted access road, class three road. It is, it is, that's... And nobody said, like, for example, our esteemed realtor I here... I didn't sell you that property. No, but... I would have said something. <laughs> nobody told us, whoa, you better watch it. You can't get across the bridge that no one's ever been told that there. I don't care what anybody says. You know, everybody's in the same boat. Uh, you know, yeah. I don't want to beat the drum because I've said all this before. Yes. yes. Was, wasn't that compromised more during Irene? Wasn't that what it, it really It was undercut yeah. then, but then that brought it to the attention that it's that the oldest be. bridge in town and that it's- Right, that was some. 11 I mean, years ago. Right. Yeah, it would yeah. have been, to our benefit if Irene would have taken that bridge out. But, right. You know, but it didn't. Yeah. So it didn't. I guess yeah. we can hope for a rain. Yeah, and then your concrete <laughs> truck made it over. So, I mean, it's, it's, but no one wants to be the final straw that breaks the camel's back because then everyone's stranded up there. So that's why the. You know, we have someone from Zoom who wants to add something. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Martha. You're on mute. I, I just wondered that we spent almost a half hour on that last discussion. I wondered if we could just go on with the, with the list because we've got quite a list tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything else to say about? I guess we started with the speed on the back roads and we got on to the, the bridge on West Hill Road. And it's, um, I had, it's I had something unrelated. But, okay. Um, I'd like to propose to the town, the town fathers, mm -hmm. Of the select board that we institute a, uh, a front yard um, uh, standard as such so for example if you're coming over the pass the Brandon Pass and you come down through the bucolic woods the National Forest suddenly you're presented with two buildings that have the doors kicked in, the windows broken out, and they just look awful. And next thing you know, people will be living in those abandoned buildings. And somebody owns them, and I think I know who it, who it is, but I'm not gonna say anything. There should be an ordinance that says, if the windows are busted out and you own it, um, you should board them up, for just for safety. It looks like hell, but what can I say? Um, if you continue down the road, um, down by Mac McGuffins, who has a whole lot of equipment, who keeps it all neat in his in his field, or around his his large barn, and keeps it parked and, and clean and nice. There happens to be another person that that's on the other side of the road that has all kinds of vehicles leaning into the stream. The whole front yard is packed with trash. So if you've ever read 
um, Hands on the Land, a, a very good book about Vermont. In the 30s, you know, it was a very tough time. And the state put together a group of people to walk around and explain to people, there ain't nobody coming as a tourist to Vermont if you throw all your garbage out in front of your house. So people started cleaning up because people were complaining that, you know, the Adirondacks had a lot of people coming and the White Mountains over in New Hampshire. And so they walked up and they said, geez, could you just clean it up? We're not really infringing on anybody's rights. It just looks bad. And so the conversation that we've had here about all these people up here, of course, all the new people who are moving in, we don't want this place looking like the city. We just, you know, we should have some basic standards here. So, you know, just go around and go, hey, you know, maybe you should move some of that stuff in your backyard. Maybe it shouldn't be perched on the edge of the bank of the mm -hmm. creek there with the oil leaking out of the cars yeah. right into the yeah. creek. I mean, I don't see anything yeah. wrong with that. Like I don't know who the cleanliness police the person cleanliness would police, be. Right. But, you know, I'm sure we could send a letter out to, there's a few people in town. Every, uh, everything else around here looks beautiful. People mow their lawns or they trim their hedges or whatever. I love living here, but, you know, every time I pass that those two shacks, yeah. It really bothers me. I think the windows in the two on the upper part of the mountain have been repaired. Not I'm today. Sure. No, not I recently. They were <laughs> drove by there the today. The so so the curtains are blowing out the windows. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, something. so in, in response to the stream there, there's, that's a state. Yeah. Right. State. Yeah. You can you can notify the state right. and say I, I was there's just going to tell there's that. We, but, we got into it down in Twitchell Settlement. Yeah, there not I mean, too that's happened a few times. And here. we had John White go talk to them about the garbage that was the there. The, right. And then uh, the state road heard on trying to get them to move all their vehicles, mm -hmm. but it really didn't go anywhere, I don't believe, because oh, they really didn't move John a lot White of them. is our health officer. Yeah. So we can talk to John about going and seeing that, and then he'll yeah, notify the state, and they'll come and possibly do something with that. Yeah. So, yeah. so is there, does the town have an ordinance about how many vehicles you can have, dead vehicle, unregistered vehicles you can you have? you can only have Which, one unregistered vehicle. That's in the zoning. In the zoning. In the zoning. Yeah. In the zoning yeah. But yeah. It's yeah. in zoning. No, I don't know that, what I mean, it says. It's though. not anything yeah. that... We don't yeah, and it's and if you're going to have a junkyard, I think you have to have that registered with the state. Yeah. Because so. we have, there, there are some places in town, and I'm yeah. pretty sure I've mentioned this to the people, and nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. We have junkyards right. that... It, I mean, there couldn't be more than five people in the whole town that are abusing the bucolic beauty of see. Vermont. In our town. Yeah. That you can see. Yeah, can see. <laughs> well, if I can't see it, I don't care. Right. <laughs> it's still see. No, that's a point well taken. And then, yeah, every time you drive by that place, it's. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Right. Um, Um, we had something like, it's kind of on the same issue about school street traffic and, and parking issues. I think no. Susie Smallman was going to talk on that, but she didn't make it in tonight. I think that has, is that related mostly to the trucks delivering to the hardware? Um, no, she just said that there's a lot of speeding coming around the corner and they slide around that corner. <laughs> That's a She's pretty tight corner to go speeding. <laughs> yeah. Well, when they get to the corner, they slide. So she's just really? worried about people getting hurt hit or cars and then she said that um whether it's a vehicle or it didn't sound like it was a truck that day she had come in to talk about the parking lot it was a big like camper with a trailer behind it just kind of took up all of the parking where her residence i guess live uh, park so they couldn't get in and out so it's just like is there an ordinance we can have for parking on the streets you know. Yeah, that's not really a parking spot in, on School Street there, so that's not, I mean, that's, you know, wherever it was. There is a parking, parking ordinance yeah, already. Yeah, there is a parking so. ordinance, but that, yeah, that yeah. just took someone to go and knock on the door or say, hey, you yeah. got to move. But 
Right. I don't know who that was. So. Right. Um, yeah, always more to deal with. Um, we're done with parking and cars and roads for now. We're going to move on to the um, library invoice reimbursement for the. Um, that was for Cody Bowen doing the flashing. Cody Downs. Downs. Cody Downs. Cody Downs. Um, doing the flashing to kind of a preventative to keep water from slipping in between the siding and the rest of the house. So it's, um, so they're asking for a four hundred twenty-eight dollars and ninety cents to finish the balance of a thousand ninety-seven dollar invoice, which I think is totally reasonable to take out of the building. Yep. So, I'd move to approve that. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was quick. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we got the PACIF grant for the fire department. Is that up in? It's in that folder. That one. I signed it because she had to have it yep. in, so I just signed yep. it. So it's been the application has been approved as submitted and. Um, what well, we just need to um, officially approve the application. Is that what this is here yep. for? Yes. I move to approve that. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. This is um, for a couple security cameras on the fire station there. That would be, if we had the money for a grant, that would be a, the way to deal with the traffic is to have mm -hmm. those automatic cameras that will take a picture of the speeding second. car. And that was, <laughs> when I was in England recently, I finally found out what they were. Every now and then, you'd see there was a sign on the side of the road that says, um, speed monitor, point ahead, and there were these dashed lines on the road and a camera up there, and it could use those lines to measure how fast you're going on the road, and if you're going too fast, it'd send you a ticket in the mail, so. No, I mean, yeah. Hmm? No, I haven't seen them yet. I didn't check it my mail It takes a photo yet. of your license plate. <laughs> it does. I mean. Rent a car. Before the town buys the house, didn't they, <laughs> so, didn't they have one of the signs? Didn't they post a sign somewhere? Where was that? That so, tells you how fast you're going? I'm just over by the window. They're, yeah. yeah, they come and they go and they work for a while and then they Yeah, don't. we couldn't find anybody to repair them, so we had them taken uh, down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, when they did the traffic study on the Buffalo Mountain Road, that gave you what size vehicle it was, what the speed of the vehicle was, whether it was a tow in a trailer or whatever. I mean, it, it was loaded with information on like that. So, you know, it's, there's there was just too much for me to digest all at once. I needed to talk to Rita, and I haven't had a chance yeah. to yet. So, before I, before I leave, just one more thing. Yes. I, I, I called Julie about this, but since we have a lot more people coming in and vacationing, this summer we had a lot of ATVs and four-wheelers and whatnot driving on the roads and I'm pretty sure it's not legal to drive it somewhere else. No, it's not. Yeah. So, and I know I've read in the paper recently about towns that are making sure that it doesn't ever become legal in you know, certain towns that aren't passing it. And I spoke to someone today about them riding on their on the roads and I said, you know, it's not legal. And she goes, it isn't. <laughs> so, so that's why I started to say this, the front page forum, I mean, a lot of people in town that come in don't read a paper, mm -hmm. but is there perhaps, because I know Granville had something about the fact that it isn't legal to ride them on the road. Yeah. Is, can you post something that say when you come to Vermont? You know, it's, I, don't, I, I don't know. If that's a, if it would help, or, but. Put it on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ma the Martha can make note of it for the yeah. newspaper. Yeah, no, it doesn't hurt to come to media and, and speak up and get it on Zoom and on Orca Media and in the paper and, and you know. yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Martha, you're on mute. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, I didn't hear very much of what she said. It was something about people going too fast, but I didn't, I couldn't hear very well because I guess she's in the back of the room. Um, she was talking yeah. about the fact that there um, occasionally people will be riding four wheelers um, on the roads. And in fact, that is not legal in Rochester. And it would be good to make that point clear and um, on Zoom and then Orca and in the paper too, if you. Okay, so. so 
Riding ATVs. four wheelers. Four ATVs. Wheel, ATVs. ATVs. Uh, yeah. yeah. On, 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 any, on any road, right? On, on the town roads. Any roads. On yeah. Town roads is not legal in Rochester. Correct. Okay, I can make a point of concluding that in the article. I'm sorry, I just couldn't hear her before. Oh, that's good. Thank okay. you for speaking up. That's... Okay, but then when I heard you said Martha will include it, I thought, okay, I can't hear what okay, I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we've got um, a service agreement to execute between Two Rivers Regional Commission and the Town of Rochester on the, their help with updating our zoning regulations. So I move to uh, approve that. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let, let it happen. Patience. And um, we've got the contract for the stray animal holding, the homeward bound contract. That's a yearly thing, or is it bi yearly? I think it's, it's yearly. It's yearly. Yearly, yeah. yeah. And they've um, We've been using them for years, and I think that's probably the best way to go. So I we actually we actually haven't used them in the last three years. We haven't used them, but we have them in our pocket as a. We haven't contracted with them. Oh, we haven't. No. Mm -hmm. um, we skipping it, or did we? Use yeah, else? I don't, and that's kind of why I brought it up. Um, they called, and uh, we had had a dog issue. Anyway, um, our dog person called them just to like ask a couple of questions and they're like, hey, you guys <clears throat> haven't renewed your contract. Is it something that you want to do? Mm -hmm. And so Jeff was like, I don't know. Let me check with the okay. office. So okay. that's how that started. Um, and it looks like we haven't signed on with them since 2018 or something. Right. Um, and she said she just didn't know like if it had got forgot had been forgotten or if we had just decided that we didn't need it anymore. But she and wanted so to something. double check. I think with the with the previous select board, there was a lot of discussion, and we had not really been using them. And it was like five hundred dollars for mm -hmm. the contract. It's four hundred dollars for the contract, and then seventy five dollars for each dog. For dog. Right, and we decided to go with the seventy five dollars if we had to take a dog over there. Okay, so that was in that previous. So you don't have to have the contract with them. To you just have to pay in? by the dog. Oh, by the if dog. If you take yep. it over. And like plus, I, right. we do perfectly fine with just locking them in the basement for the day. <laughs> <laughs> we do have the check. We have a, yeah. yeah, but it's it's it taken down now. But. Yeah, and like before, I didn't even really. It was like hot and gross out, so I just put him in the basement. He was cool. Nice cool. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. nice down there. But um, yeah, I don't really think that that's right. necessary. Okay. So, but I can't make that. All right, decision. so that this is on here because they approached us about. That. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I wasn't gonna say or sign anything. All right. Without all right. Well, then seventy-five dog and pay as you go. Pay okay. As you, pay as you go. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, have we got Joan on Zoom here? Yep. She's on Zoom. She's on mute. Here she is. Hey, Joan. Hi, um, I really don't have much to report. I'm, you know, just busy uh, finishing up uh, odds and ends, things I've been working on, um, checking in on things that are still in progress and will continue after I've left, uh, primarily the, the FEMA reimbursements. So uh, I'll be bringing everybody up to date on Friday when I meet with them. Um, and other than that, I really don't have anything to report. All right. All right, well, you're going to meet with everybody on Friday, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And Rita and, and Rita. The, the girls. Yep. And we'll okay. just get the grants all figured out. Yeah. Well, I'd whatever, like to say now, at least, um, if I don't see you later, then thank you for these years of your help and navigating all this um, red thank tape you that you meeting. helped us. You're here for one more meeting. One more right? meeting. Yeah. Say, okay. You can say it again then. All right, I'll say it again then. <laughs> that is going to be okay. good. Yeah. <laughs> And if you want to go out with a bang, you could get with Norm Christensen on advising him on how to fill out that application for Grant skate review, space. Yeah. Grant review. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. And, um, you know, if he wants, if he's able to come in on Friday, um, I'll, you know, if there's something I can help. Sounds like he just wants okay. you to look over the shoulder and give him some pointers. Sure. Well, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll make sure he comes. All right. Well, thank you, Joan. Um, Tony. Hear um, the library report? Yeah, things are pretty busy there. If you've been uh, reading the paper at all, a lot of different programs going on, so that's kind of going on, all the people who work there. But another thing I wanted to mention is that Jeanette uh, spoke with a person who apparently can do some painting. And uh, 
he gave a quick estimate of about $9,900 to paint three sides of the building. So at least it's something to look at and think about. Yeah, and Frank, it just um, you had talked to someone, yeah, a possible painter to that. Yeah, um, yeah, he they were going, they were headed back to Florida. They they thought they might come back this fall, mm -hmm. and so we were going to talk to him. But that's, he used to live in Granville, shot, the yeah, guy. Shot, anyway, yeah. so no one. So that would be to do three sides. So they'd be willing to break it up and do it aside. At least, uh, probably. I you know, I mean, about three sides. Yeah, yeah. It might um, might be more um, achievable if we could, you know, do a side a year or something. It was a it was a guy that painted uh, Liberty Hill. Yeah. Smile and Joe. Yeah, Smile and Joe. So. Um, I guess we'll take that under advisement. I, I have his number too, Tony, so I'm going to... Is this talk. guy that are we talking about the same guy? Working I, belt or something like no. that? No. no. No, no, this is a different guy. Okay. Well, anyway, there's no possibility. Okay. And, yeah. and what, what's that guy's name, Tony? This guy is Rosenfeld. You, you, have, Rosenfeld. That inform, you have that information? Yeah, I think so. Well, Rosenfeld, I guess. Paul okay, so, so Julie has that information. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, All right. <coughs> okay, we we'll get it. We'll get little... um, we talked a lot about the highway. I don't suppose Cooter's on Zoom there. No, no, no that's the no. farthest thing. You got like. anything you want to contribute about it, Frank? Uh, no, I no. checked on the monitoring the uh, waste. Uh, storm drain yep. project that's going on down there and how that's been coming on. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, that's a lot about of stuff it. in the ground down there. Yep. They've been yeah. ditching some yep. up, on, up somewhere up in Austin yep. Hill or yep. up in the Hawk or someplace. Um, Terry, you got anything on the utility front tonight? No. No. Okay. Is um, Jeff get part? on Zoom about energy coordinator. I saw you had a booth set up at the recycling this week and that was some um, good. Saw some conversation going on down there. Yep. And um, the old business, we've got the master, master financial policy sections one through four discussion. I, I kind of went. Old business, did we miss something? What? Um, what about that email from Vicky? Oh, that was back up on the speed on Bethel Mountain Road. That was the okay. speed on Did Bethel Mountain Road. Did you touch on her? Okay. Yeah, that was that. That's related to. I didn't. Did she want me to read this on the back? I wanted, then, just wanted to make sure that you guys saw it. Yes, and like this is again dealing with right. um, speed on Bethel Mountain Road and the uh, um, and not. She pointed out maybe not only changing the speed limit, but. Um, um, eliminating passing zones because she's had several instances when people when pulling into her driveway all of a sudden someone has to slam on the brakes to because they right. decided they'd pass because people were going slow and why were they going slow they were going to turn into their driveway yeah so mm -hmm. that's a good point to, you know it's like don't so that much a hurry. <clears throat> um, so in the uh, financial policy sections so I went through one through four for uh, section two, I'm still writing, but sections one, three, and four, I made notes, um, should be here. And then I still have to talk with maybe Nathan. Um, yeah, it should be clipped. It should have a binder, it should have a binder clip on it. Are we still within a deadline on that? No, maybe. Um Right here. Right. Oops, sorry, I hung up in there too. Here. Yep. I thought if we did like a few sections at a time, um, it might be kind of like we've been tabling it quite a bit. Now. Yeah, we got to yeah. get it done. Yeah. yeah. So something for you to look at, and um, did you, I made notes on the pages myself. Right. Did um, you put the changes in there that I put in there? I did uh, the, the uh, adding fire, the fire department. Fire department yep, yep, that's that. yep. that's in okay. pencil. So, right. um, 
I figure if we could just at least look at it and review um, and maybe a couple other people outside, I don't know, maybe Nancy could look at it. I would think it. that it would be worth having just a, a meeting of the budget committee to go through this with us. Right. To, you know, yeah, it. she has to produce this updated report Before, by a certain deadline. Yeah. Which is when? Well, we can't do any more grants. Or without having this finished. Yeah. yeah. State, federal. state. Well, state, state and state, federal. State and federal. Yeah. And they're looking for um, um, updates. So. All right. So. Um, I figure if we take little bites out of it, we can mm -hmm. eventually finish. So you want to take a bite tonight? Or you want to get um, I wanted to. I wanted you to look at what I wrote in there, like okay. some corrections, and then maybe have Nancy, and then maybe what we could do um, at the next meeting is finalize the adoption yeah. of one, three, I haven't and four. Seen it either. Okay. With any yeah. notes on it. Okay. Okay, so the notes. All right, now I'm seeing some notes in here. Yeah, I think between um, the heat and the preparing for the voting tomorrow, it's and a lot. that it makes yeah. sense to 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 dive into this next meeting. Yep. Yep. And then just you guys okay. want to look at yeah. it. Maybe what I can do. Is this just the one copy, or have some other ones? I can make you all a copy and just write in there the notes yeah. that I've. Yeah, that would be with. that'd yeah. be helpful. That would be and then we aren't going to do anything with it until next meeting. I don't know why we just can't come in. Come in and for an hour and just look at cruise it. through what she's done. Yep. And okay. It's not I know a lot. I read the first yeah. four sections yeah, myself. It's not a lot. And, uh, I really found a couple things, things that Kristen I was and concerned. I, um, we went through it together. So. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. And we should, I don't know if that's on there doing what. Um, that uh, tank removal, oh, yeah, 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 we were ready to get. Um, so we had the um, couple bids on the um, removing the tank fuel tank in behind this building, and right. um, you want to dig that? yeah, they're in the back here. <laughs> we got three bids on that, and uh, I'm recusing myself, okay, yeah. Um, we had Mac McGuffin, 1525, uh, Dave Harvey, 1315, Excavate, and Ray at 1501. So, so I'd, I'd move to give it to Dave Harvey, the lowest bidder. Yeah, second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. Thanks for refusing yourself, Pat. Excuse me, yeah. could you tell me the amount that Dave Harvey did was? I, yeah. had, I didn't catch that. You had put that in the paper last 13, time. $13.15. Uh, $13,015? No, $1,315. Okay, $1,315. $1,315. Yeah. Well, okay, you, had these numbers, you had these numbers from the, our last meeting. It was okay, I just didn't remember them off the top of my head now. That's all. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I got it correct. Thank yeah. you. Uh, remember any other public comment? Oh, we're a uh, public all left. We're all driving on the roads now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a letter that yeah. we um, put together to send to the people that live around the park. Um, that which is you know, kind of like something that we would don't think we want to send out some letters to people in town too. Right? It's not just park. <laughs> Looks like we've done a very good job with our roads. Yes. Yeah. That's too fast. They're asking us to stop grading them. Yes. <laughs> Don't make them so wide. And then they'll call in and say they drove her up. Yeah. I know. <laughs> or they're muddy. For every be, action, there's a reaction. It would be nice to pave Brook Street, but then we'll get calls that cars are going too fast. fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody will be driving up through there 50 miles an hour. <laughs> oh dear. No, that sounds, huh? that sounds good. I, that sounds all right. Yeah. yeah. Pat, did you read this? Um, I think I might have read it last time around, right? Where's the snow? We just needed to vote on whether or not to send it out. Yes, I have read this. Okay, cool. Basically, we're voting on um, sending a, 
letter to the residents around the park encouraging them to keep it um, keep their properties um, in accordance with the ordinances and um, appropriate for being on our beautiful park yeah and we're going to include the ordinance with them so I'd um, move to, to execute that letter and send it off. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And if the, the, that letter is well received, perhaps we would expand to the whole town. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Um, anything else anyone would like to speak about tonight? We don't have Vicar Catherine. No. Okay. No. Um, no. There, there was some discussion uh, update on the high school's uh, feasibility study aftermath <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that uh, it was suggested in the feasibility study meeting that um, from this point forward, a manager, an actual project manager be hired um, to seek out grants, write grants, and kind of go forward with the next steps of the school. Um, Vic and Catherine, Vic is, is stepping down as mm -hmm. the, the head of the committee, um, and uh, they are starting a conversation with us about how to handle that person that they would like to hire to be the project manager. Uh, that person would be paid out of grant funds. Mm -hmm. Um, not on the town payroll, um, would be treated as a subcontractor, uh, similar to the Fair Weather Consulting. Right. Um, but there, there, there will be some accounting for the ladies in the town office, and um, I just think it's ready for some discussion. And I just is wanted that to grant, give you that. Is update. that grant funding? Is that? something in place or is that some um potential grant funding um i think it's potential still mm -hmm. i can't i can't say that there's any funding currently in place to hire that person so mm -hmm. we're having the discussion before the fact right so is the town gonna get a chance to vote on all this before you ever I, three people decide on it I, I, we're not gonna have to decide on it terry believe me well i have I'm, a question also it sounds as though you're you're having the town of Rochester responsible for I, making this decision. I, Where's the school in that? There's I, no decision on the agenda today. I'm just giving you an update. No, as but to I'm just what, asking a question. What the committee wants to do on their next step. I think the Is committee Suffrage needs not to. not involved in this <clears throat> for uh, acquisition of the high school? Uh, just as represent, they're the owners of the building also. They're the owners of the building. They just want to sell it. I would think that the committee's next job should be to form a nonprofit and negotiate directly with the school board and buy the damn building if that's what they want to do and go from there rather than the town being held hostage for all this stuff. These girls in the office don't need any of that paperwork to do. Man, they hardly keep up with what they're doing now. It'd be impossible for them to administer that. And I think that this this group, if they really think that this is a viable solution, they form a nonprofit and go talk to the school board and buy the damn building and then get somebody that's going to run it if that's what they want to do and, and take the town out of it. I mean, it's just nuts for us to even be considered for this. Yeah, so and this the way I look at it. To anyway, Terry's question. So this when it comes down, we've been working towards the point, the whole procrastination was to gather more information so that the town could vote on it and have an educated vote on it. Now this wanting to have a project manager, that seems like that would be a step beyond yeah, that, that vote, beyond that vote. So where they stand right now is um, working on the floodplain lines mm -hmm. and the possibility of further subdividing the floodplain property away from the high school building so that the high school would not have the dark cloud of floodplain hanging over it. Right. Um, that is also a tall order and a little bit more than Catherine can probably handle in the long mm -hmm. run. That's going to be a little bit longer of a process, I would 
I would, you would guess. think so, yeah. Um, so that's that's where the project, the, yeah. that, that's where it all stands right now. Between is, the brownfield aspect and the floodplain uh -huh. aspect, it's turned into a lot more complicated of a thing than the school board just back. saying, let's just sell this property. And it's right. really, it's um, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We could, as a town, decide that um, we have heard enough and we think we are ready to go to the town and that would be our next step, ready mm -hmm. to go to the town for a vote. Um, <coughs> they, the committee, I'm sure would like to um, ride out the possibility of the federal grant that is a substantial amount of money. They would like to go to the town with the vote saying we have millions of dollars or go to the town yeah. saying we now don't this, have millions this of dollars. subdivision to get rid of the floodplain property is uh, can't is, qualify for federal is, money is a requirement a before they can even correct so yeah so that presentation of all that money is, is isn't the brownfield that's part of it too that is part of it um but the the brakes the brakes were put on when the federal people said this, oh, there's a flood this can't happen in a floodplain. <laughs> FEMA, you can't, FEMA's not going to authorize you to grant money to someone. Kentucky. And <laughs> yeah. FEMA has to like, pay for it again. So um, it's, it, it's been a, a little bit of a quandary there for them. So if they can get rid of the floodplain, then they can just jump back into, it's, it's flood way and not, not yeah. a flood. Um, they can jump back into the federal grant again. But for right now, all federal and state grants would be on hold because of that. So there'd be no money for the building. How are you going to get it out of floodway? I mean, you already know it's you know, subdivided. Subdivided the land out. So you're going to do subdivide the half a building off? No, it's not the building. It's just a corner of the property. Right. It's more. Yeah. It's it, it's about having both a floodplain and a floodway on your property. If you have both of those. You're you're just crossed right off the list. They will give you money for flood plain, but not flood way. The flood way is not part of the building; just the flood plain, I believe. <laughs> it's it's complicated. But. The sad part is this town can't even take care of the buildings we got already. <laughs> it's time, most it's, of our town buildings look like it's shit. It's probably time to have start having that discussion and 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 plan for what where we're going to go with it. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have all the cards in front of us, but it doesn't look like we may get many more cards. No, but we've got some cards. really big cards lately with all this information about right. one, the grant money, then about the restrictions on grant money because of floodplain. So, I mean, we know a lot more than we did a year ago. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But I, so. I think, like I said before, that we've taken this as far as we need to as a as a town as an office of the select board and they need to figure out if they really want to see this project go forward they need to form a nonprofit and take control of the building and then go from there it's not that shouldn't be balanced on the on the taxpayers yeah. i'm sorry i mean i know we bought that building once and paid for it through the school but we had a lot of help when we did that, mm -hmm. and it wasn't as much money as it is now when we built that. And we were using it then. R right. Yeah. And so, I, you know, the way the school budgets were set up and, and the way we had to fund those all through these years is you had 80 to 85 percent of the school budget you can't touch. And you got 15 percent you can, and all mm -hmm. that's maintenance. And we cut that yeah. to make the budget so the we could educate the kids and go from there but now that that's all passed through we're done with it you know i don't know what else to say i i personally can't see us owning that building and i don't know how the hell we could we couldn't afford it i think that um we should have this discussion because we will have another election in november mm -hmm. and perhaps that would be um the next opportunity to put this to, to a put vote. This to a vote. I, I, I believe that it should go to a vote either during town meeting or an election mm -hmm. so that people do so come people out. So people show up. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Yeah. Um, Probably more people would show up at the election than at the town meeting, huh? Yeah, I would think so. But I it's, and so. it, it's it, it may be an opportunity to, to get the input from the town. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that's, that's a good idea. But I think what you're saying also is you, you go to a vote and at least everybody knows where everyone stands. Right. And so it's it just be... without letting another year or two go by. No, I don't think we I'll need to do that because this is now, this is people. the big playing card that needs to get on the table is what does the town want to do. And we're right. looking at another heating system season coming up too. Right. And it's double. And it's double. Right. And the furnaces are even worse than they were before. Yeah. <laughs> it's so warm now. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Can't we it's just save right some now. of this heat? <laughs> we did have their buildings inspected by the safety inspector, right? Mm -hmm. Through the LCT, yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I think we got rolled up for a couple missing signs down cellar. Nothing but major. Nothing That's how major. We, we ended up. Well, no, we got that because we finished last year's. And um, I don't know about the town garage. I don't think they had any issues down there. I think he said... He had one, uh, uh, the pit had one thing that wasn't covered or one of the mm -hmm. one of the vents was bad there. So that was all he wrote up about that, but not a big deal, he said. So, so I, I think back on the school thing that it did, um, would be good to put, say, this November date for a vote and then say, okay, the committee, any more information that you think well, is important that you can together. get out between now and get it out but that's when we'll you know present the, the you know what the town thinks about this and that's um you know it's not like we're saying you have to vote tomorrow but that gives us some time to mm -hmm. you know but it gives everybody time yeah. to find out more information to provide more information yeah yeah, yeah they can I mean, look at the feasibility study um and then we can give an update on all of the the recent developments yes. and developments that are still happening um and then i think we have as as much information as we're ever really going yeah. to have yeah. uh, unless we get approved for all sorts right. of millions of dollars but right. it is seems to be one step forward and two step back mm -hmm. on that which mm -hmm. is caught which costs time every time yeah. you take yeah. two, two steps back mm -hmm. all right Sounds like a piece of a plan. I will bring that information back to the committee. Thank you. Um, well, they put a lot of work into they it. Have. Yep, they have. Yes, they have. Huge amount. And, that, and that's good. And there's a lot more to put into it. If they want to go forward with it, I mean, there is. All right. I think unless anyone else has something to talk about, that's it for tonight. No one's quiet. All right. Thank you all. Yep. Keep warm. See.